I want to be Dirty Dan. What makes you think you can be Dirty Dan? I'm Dirty Dan. I'd say I'm Dirty Dan. I'd say I'm Dirty Dan. No! I'd say I'm Dirty Dan. No! I'm Dirty Dan. Hey, what's up guys? Here's an important result that you may remember from your days of algebra. If we have a polynomial with real coefficients and the complex number a plus bi is the root of that polynomial, then so is the conjugate of that complex number a minus bi. And this result sort of hints at an interesting phenomenon that occurs in the complex numbers. Namely that we can't really tell the difference between i and negative i. So what do I mean by that? It turns out that given any algebraic expression involving i, if you change every instance of i to negative i, the expression will remain true. So the first example that we should look at is Euler's identity, because everyone loves Euler's identity. e to the i pi is negative one. So what is e to the negative i pi? Well, it's clear that this is also gonna be negative one because if we interpret this as an angle, pi is 180 degrees and negative pi is negative 180 degrees. That's the same angle. So this remains negative one. So maybe that one example isn't very convincing. So let's look at something else. Let's say we have two plus i and we square it. Well, what is this equal to? Well, we can just multiply this out. So when we square two plus i, we get three plus four i. So what happens if we square two minus i? We get three minus four i. So the statement two plus i squared equals three plus four i remains true whenever we switch each instance of i. Here, this three minus four i can be written as three plus four times negative i. All right, let's look at something a bit weirder. So here we have two raised to the ith power, and that rounds to the complex number 0 0.77 plus 0 0.64 i. So what do you think two to the negative i rounds to? Good guess, it's 0 0.77 minus 0 0.64 to the i which can be written as 0 0.77 plus 0 0.64 times negative i. So again, we have a statement and we have a statement where we switch all of the instances of i to negative i and the statement will remain true. What if our statement involves both i and negative i in the beginning? So here we have a complex number two to the ith power minus three i and that rounds to the complex number 0 0.77 minus 2.36i. So again, if we switch all of the instances of i here with negative i, so this i becomes negative i, and this minus three i or plus three times negative i becomes plus three i. And indeed, if you put this into a calculator and you try to find a rounded value, you will get. So, these are a few examples that demonstrate that if you have an algebraic statement and you switch every instance of i with negative i, the statement will remain true. So why does this happen? Why can't we tell the difference between i and negative i in a certain sense? Well, what is i? How do we define it? The defining property of the imaginary unit i is that its square is negative one. That's what i is. i is the number such that when you square it, you get negative one. The issue here is that negative i also fits this property. So the defining property is met by both i and negative i. So which one is the imaginary unit? Is it i or is it negative i? Well, it doesn't really matter. They're kind of indistinguishable. We have these two numbers that satisfy the defining property. Call one of them i, call the other negative i. They are additive inverses. So their difference is only relative to one another. But we can't really say that i is positive and that negative i is negative. They're just two different symbols symbolizing that they are additive inverses. Now, you may be wondering how exactly this is different from other numbers that are defined in terms of square rooting. For example, the square root of two. 
If we can't tell the difference between i and negative i in a certain sense, can we tell the difference between square root of 2 and negative square root of 2? Well, there is a sort of similar phenomenon going on, but it's not nearly as strong. For example, if we have a rational polynomial or a polynomial with rational coefficients and a plus b squared to 2 is a root of that polynomial where a and b are rational numbers, then, like before, a minus b times the square root of 2 is also a root of that polynomial. So there is a similarity there. These two results are analogous. They stem from the fact that to the reals, i and negative i are algebraically indistinguishable, and to the rationals, the square root of 2 and the negative square root of 2 are algebraically indistinguishable. So these results are analogous in those respective arenas. But the overall far-reaching result that we have with i and negative i does not hold for the square root of 2 and the negative square root of 2. For example, we looked at 2 to the i earlier. Well, what's 2 to the square root of 2? 2 to the square root of 2 is approximately 2.665. And 2 to the negative square root of 2 which is of course 1 over 2 to the square root of 2. That's around 0 0.375. And these numbers are multiplicative inverses, but they don't have that same relation. If I express this as some combination of a rational number and a multiple of the square root of 2, if I even could do that, which I probably can't. In fact, I definitely can't because this is transcendental. Anyways, the same relation does not hold. Switching root 2 to negative root 2 in every instance of an algebraic expression will not result in another algebraic expression that is still true. Okay, but why? Why is the indistinguishability of i and negative i so much stronger than the indistinguishability of the square root of 2 and the negative square root of 2? Both of these numbers are defined in terms of what happens when you square them. So what's the difference? Well, the difference is hinted at by something I said earlier on. Positive and negative i does not mean anything. Which one is positive and which one is negative? What does that mean? Well, what does positive and negative mean in a normal sense? Something is positive if it's greater than zero. So when we talk about the square root of two and it being positive, that means something. It means it is greater than zero. In a certain sense, we can't tell the difference between the square root of 2 and the negative square root of 2. That's a very limited sense. As soon as we have the idea of an order, they are different, and their difference is meaningful. The square root of 2 is bigger than 0. That's why it's positive. The negative square root of 2 is less than 0. It is negative. But if we start talking about i and negative i, is i greater than or less than 0? Is negative i greater than or less than 0? So if we look at the complex plane, putting i and negative i extending vertically from 0, it seems like we should just be able to say, okay, well, i is bigger than 0. i is greater than 0. Negative i is less than 0. So what's the problem? Well, it turns out that the complex numbers cannot be totally ordered in a way that respects or is compatible with its algebraic structure. Since we're talking about arithmetic and you know, algebraic expressions, it's pretty important that if we put an order on it, it has to remain meaningful once we start involving algebraic expressions in arithmetic. But it turns out that this is impossible. And in fact, for any algebraically complete field, there is no way to put a total order on it that respects the algebraic structure. But that's for another video. So in summary, i and negative i are in a sense qualitatively equivalent. We can't really tell the difference between the two. And that's because they both meet the fundamental definition of what the imaginary unit is and the fact that one is positive and one is negative doesn't actually mean anything except relative to one another they are additive inverses. But one is not greater than or less than the other. In contrast, square root of 2 and a negative square root of 2 do have some certain indistinguishability properties but it's not nearly as strong as that for i and negative i because those are real numbers, and so there is an order, and square root of 2 being positive does mean something other than being the additive inverse of negative square root of 2. It is bigger than 0. That means something. But anyways, that's going to have to do it for this one. If you enjoyed the video, be sure to subscribe, and I'll see you guys next time.